All right, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to today's Adult Education Forum. And so this forum is in honor and memory of an incredible woman, activist, worker, missionary. I have her memoir right here that's in our church library. So you could pick it up and read it sometime, Strength for the Journey. It charts Marilee Scaff's life um, through her time as a prisoner of war in the Philippines to her work throughout the community. And so she was a resident of Pilgrim Place and did so much work. And so she each year would put out a guide explaining the propositions on the ballot to give people a more educated opportunity to make decisions for themselves on how they might vote each election season. And that mantle has been carried now by Reverend Jean Boutillier, who's a member of Claremont United Church of Christ, a resident at Pilgrim Place, and Gene needs a memoir of his own because his life is also full of so many stories and so much activism. Gene has a lifetime of working on issues ranging from affordable housing to labor to immigration. He has just termed out after serving six years on our board of mission and social action and then switched over to our arts and education board. And so he is just an incredible servant of the church and our community. And so he's put together this guide. You'll see at the top of it that these views are Gene's views. They don't necessarily represent this church or anyone other than Gene. However, this is so important, I think, in the church world to emphasize that the church will never tell you how you have to vote. But it is important to be educated, to be civically minded, to be thinking about the issues so that we can make informed decisions on our own. And so Gene will present today, and we are so honored to have you, Gene. So the floor is yours. Dave, uh, the floor is ours because uh, there's a ground rule, which is we'll run out of time, so there won't be a Q&A at the end. There will be interjections whenever you feel like it. Seize the moment. This is a shared moment, it, so it need not be a lecture. You can interject, but if you do, be brief, be kind. And because there are people online, I'll repeat it briefly for you uh, uh, who are not in the room. Uh, getting the uh, following up on what uh, was just said, the prepositions matter. I am not, I am speaking to the church, preposition, to the church. I'm speaking from the church. I grew up in the church. Social action was learned at summer camp and at church all my life. I have experienced church, and so I am speaking from the UCC ethos and from learning about the values of our denomination. To and from. I am not speaking for the church. Those prepositions uh, matter. And so uh, now another word about Marilee. Uh, she died at 102. She kept the, the, this work going right up until the time of her uh, death. Uh, she was the founder, a founder of uh, the uh, preschool here at this church. Uh, she was president of League of Women Voters. Uh, she was a, a leading person on conservation issues and water issues. Uh, she was a school teacher in Claremont schools. She served more than one term on the Claremont school board, was a force of nature, and we honor her uh, memory as, we, as um, I'm, do, I'm doing this three times this week, and each of them is in honor of Marilee. I want to bring apologies from the Claremont Courier. If anybody came because you read in the Courier that Corey and uh, Rachel will be um, presenting this morning. Um, the Courier apologizes. What happened is they are speaking Wednesday morning at the 10 o'clock in the auditorium at Pilgrim Place. And um, because I am also presenting at that event and at this event, the Courier staff who are underpaid, overworked and not enough people screwed up. Both, both Mick and Alonso have apologized to any of you who, who came this morning because of Corey and, uh, 
and um, uh, Rachel. So if that's true of anybody, I apologize as well. Although in this instance, for this one time, it wasn't my mistake. Um, let's go to work on propositions. Um, my priorities, which I'll start with, are propositions A on the LA County ballot for those of you who live on the LA County's uh, Eastern edge and proposition five, which is statewide. These two are related to hunger and, um, excuse me, to housing and homelessness. Let's start with the county proposition number five. Um, it is uh, to replace a current quarter cent tax, sales tax on things that are taxed uh, for sales uh, and that is going to expire. And it will replace that expiring quarter cent um, tip tax. Proposition A. Proposition A um, with a half cent and a one that will not expire uh, unless there's the will of the voters at a future time uh, that changes it. And then that money is spent on uh, a very carefully planned uh, program of um, housing and homeless services, mental health and related especially and addiction related included, um, lots of new housing production and a very robust uh, accountability program with new vehicles for making sure the goals that are made are kept. Uh, it is uh, the first time that LA County has ever had a ballot measure that was not put on by the supervisors, all of whom support it. It was put on by vote of the, of, of the um, by, by signature gathering. A United Way of Greater Los Angeles led that campaign with lots and lots of other support. Uh, the LA Times endorsed this today. Uh, so uh, when you see on my chart here, a blank for LA Times, that's because they're rolling out their endorsements bit by bit. And today they endorse Proposition A. Uh, so uh, you can see the League of Women Voters, Labor Democrats are in support of this uh, important measure. Proposition A, for those of you who live and, and vote in LA County. Proposition five. Proposition five was put on the ballot uh, by the state legislature. It is a measure which will change the ability of a local government to pass bonds for affordable housing or for infrastructure by changing what requirement there is for uh, voter approval. Right now, a minority of voters can keep a community from developing because uh, in the spirit of Howard Jarvis, it now requires a two thirds vote of the those who vote in an election to pass a, a bond measure uh, for a city or a school district or a uh, county. This will change that to a 55%. It's still a super majority. It still is a way of showing the people uh, support this project and therefore it's okay to tax and, and, uh, and to borrow in order to make this school district roof repair or to make this investment in affordable housing. It doesn't require, it doesn't spend any money. It creates an alternative way, a better way for local government to ask for permission to spend money. To raise, to borrow money and spend it. Is there any questions about either Prop A or Prop Five before I move on? Yes. Do, do the state supervisors support it, and is it for low-cost housing or the same kind of housing? No. Uh, are you talking about Prop Five? Oh, yeah. um, Prop Five is uh, for any uh, housing project that requires general obligation bonds on the part of the city or uh, or uh, uh, infrastructure for, for environmental reasons 
uh, for street repair. If a, if a local government wants to pass a bond right now, they have to have two thirds support. Often that is still the case because we recognize the need for a sensible government to occasionally borrow just like it's okay or it's not being foolish to have a mortgage for your house or to buy your car on time. It's also reasonable up to a certain level for a municipality to decide to have a general obligation bond to improve the community over time. That's what five is for. It doesn't, it is not a bond. It's a permission for local government to advocate for the voters to um, pass a bond. And it makes it more reasonable that the bond might pass. There's been a number of bond measures locally in this region, not in Claremont, but in this region that would have passed. They had 55 plus, they had 60%, 62% of the voters supporting it, but it failed because of the Howard Jarvis legacy of uh, wanting to prevent, to prevent the public from spending money, even if the public wanted to. Okay, I'm ready to move on to other state and LA County propositions after talking for one minute about two and four, speaking of bonds. The state legislature struggled and struggled over several packages of bond issues. And they finally decided at the last minute in a negotiated uh, agreement uh, that they would spend, uh, that they would ask the, uh, us all to spend a few billion dollars on housing, though, a few billion dollars on education, yes, a few billion dollars on infrastructure related especially to, to climate change, yes. So that's what happened. They had too many requests and too many uh, things had passed the legislature for bonds. They compromised housing lost, but education, uh, which includes community colleges and uh, K through 12, and, um, uh, and also spending some of it by the state, some of it passed down to the counties and municipalities for um, remediation of the climate crisis. So um, good government types are very much united in favor of these two bonds Proposition two, education. Proposition four, infrastructure at the state level. There are also, because we in this room and online come from many communities, there's many local government bond measures that come up on these ballots. Um, and um, there isn't one in Claremont, but there's one in, in a number of towns around us. The um, opposition is usually, we don't think the government ought to be doing these things. The support is primarily, uh, we think government ought to be doing these things like fixing the schools, like uh, improving the roads, like uh, adding to the, uh, to the community uh, uh, beauty by adding a park or uh, we, we support communal activity as part of our culture. And the opposition to these bonds is generally opposed to doing that until you get to a certain point. And at that certain point, the public is saying enough because you're being too lavish in spending. And that's a control that remains, nothing changes from that. But by and large, it is the good government, good civic thing to do to support local measures for general obligation bonds, for the same reason that it's okay to borrow money to buy a house or to um, buy a car. Yes. So, if um, Proposition Five passes, yes, will that affect Proposition Two and Four now or future? Okay, that's a good question. The question is, will Prop Five apply backwards? And, and my understanding is the answer is no, it will not apply backwards. In other words, uh, it will apply to any future um, elections. 
It's a very good question, and I wondered that too, and I, I believe I've got the right answer. Okay, now let's look at some other um, uh, propositions. Um, this church, as you know, has a long, long, long history of supporting marriage equality. Proposition three is uh, enshrining in the state constitution something that is already in practice and in law, which is marriage equality in the state of California. Why put it in the constitution? Uh, because of the national pushback against uh, uh, gay rights in general. And so that's the reason for doing it. It's put there by the legislature. It would be an amendment to the state constitution. Yes or number three. Yes or number six. Number six would prohibit forced labor, meaning involuntary work while you're in a jail or a prison as a punishment for crime. And um, the argument um, in, uh, in favor of it is uh, it's still involuntary servitude. We thought we got rid of slavery. Uh, the main argument against it is um, that the services that are necessary in the prison are cheaper when they're performed by unpaid labor. Um, so um, most good government types are recommending a, a yes vote to prohibit that forced labor. Proposition 32 um, might be unnecessary in most jurisdictions in California. It raises and indexes the state minimum wage. We've had a whole bunch of partial minimum wage increases in the last couple of years. This kind of codifies them. It was being developed by, um, it was developed by a signature gathering. So it was out of the hands of the legislature. The legislature has been passing minimum wage increases with uh, uh, small businesses being permitted to lag behind large businesses and in increasing their wage. And so in some ways it might be unnecessary, but it is, um, uh, it, it is on the ballot. Uh, and it does little harm in almost all advocates and labor movement, even though they didn't create it, it was created by a millionaire who a billionaire who wanted to do something good uh, on his own with his money. He went out and got the signatures. Uh, well, it, it's not going to do much harm. Yes, Mel. Have there been any, any other LA Times endorsements on any of these uh, propositions, two through 34? Um, two through 34. I expect them to do more. Um, they're, they're rolling them out daily, but um, did I? They have. We have three of them uh, three, marriage equality, uh, local housing, infrastructure bonds, and fourth quarter. They have, yes, yeah, but they have any of the others been updated by LA Times? I, I understand the question. I, I, they have not yet come out on, they, they, they're on three, they're on five, as you pointed out. Uh, they're on six. Today they came out for A. Um, and uh, they also came out on the county proposition uh, G, excuse me, yes, G. Uh, but I, I'm not aware of them having done the other state propositions yet. I, they, um, they want to sell a paper tomorrow and not just yesterday. <laughs> and so they're rolling out the endorsements more slowly. Um, yes. I have a general question. On the proposition, is a simple majority enough to uh, have them passed and codified, or do they require the super majority? They're right now, because of the history of uh, Howard Jarvis said uh, Prop 13 decades ago, there are some measure, uh, measures that will raise revenue that require two thirds plus uh, from the bat, from the voters. Um, the, nothing on the, this ballot has that requirement. Like the gay marriage thing. The gay marriage thing um, is a simple majority. Um, come on. Now advance for me. Three, 
just finished talking about six. Um, right. I know we were talking about 32. I tried to keep moving. Uh, come down to Proposition 35. 35 uh, is um, a tax that is on the health insurer industry, not on the not on the premiums, but on the companies that, for instance, sell Medicare Advantage. Uh, and that tax is then used to pay for the state's expanded Medi-Cal program of uh, healthcare for low-income people. It is this is supported by the healthcare industry, hospitals, uh, the clinics, including the nonprofit uh, advocacy-oriented clinics, uh, doctors, nurses, uh, organizations support it because it is a strategy that increases the amount of federal Medicaid dollars that come into the state to compensate hospitals for low care for for income low wealth people's care. So the uh, the um, good government vote, in my opinion, is uh, to support this legislation, which has very wide support from the healthcare industry. It has opposition. Some of the opposition is from uh, advocates for services that are not well covered by Medi-Cal because the fear is that this will keep money from drifting in that direction for some of the uh, services that people, um, that counties provide that are not Medi-Cal reimbursed, that some of those might be lost. And so people who provide those services or rely on them are worried about Medi-Cal having the advantage for this funding. <clears throat> That's the argument against. Um, another argument against is it's a tax. I'm against taxes of all kinds, no matter who's paying it. That's not a very strong argument. And any questions about uh, Prop 35 before we keep uh, moving on? And as you can see on the list for every one of these, there's a list of supporters, opponents, and who's behind it. Proposition 36 includes uh, a reaction, um, a pushback against a movement that this congregation has by and large supported wholeheartedly, which is to <clears throat> reduce the um, over incarceration, uh, the failure, the, the focus on punishment and not on treatment, uh, the focus on against rehabilitation and in favor of revenge uh, that has been part of the tough on crime movement. It is not a soft on crime measure. It is a, uh, a trying to keep the status quo uh, experiments in uh, rehabilitation, in uh, alternative sentencing, uh, in uh, other kinds of ways of dealing with, uh, uh, with, with crime and with mental illness and with addiction, uh, which are often uh, the reason why the largest mental health hospital uh, the, the largest collection of mentally ill people in California is in our prisons and not in our hospitals or in our clinics. So this is a movement, uh, a reactionary movement against the improvements that are currently in place against over incarceration. Um, so number 36, uh, strongly I recommend a no vote. And I believe that's in deep a correlation with the people, with the values of this congregation. Now, um, a difficult one for me, and that is uh, Propositions 33 and 34. Um, Michael Weinstein is the, um, sorry, I went away from people who are looking online. Um, Michael Weinstein is the director of AIDS uh, Foundation. Uh, AIDS Foundation uh, has a huge income 
which they gather because they serve as a national pharmacy uh, uh, for mail order uh, medications. They then spend that money on all kinds of things. Um, much of it has been spent on public policy advocacy. Much of it has been spent on developing housing. They were a very important developer of housing during the early stages of the AIDS epidemic. Their housing has grown and grown and grown in quantity, and it's gone down, 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 down in quality. They are a slumlord. They have done some, they have lost control of many of their buildings on Skid Row. As the former executive of the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, which I started and funded them, I found them extremely difficult, irresponsible as recipients of, of, of government money. Uh, that's a personal statement, but I backed up by audit complaints and troubles that, of, of all kinds. Um, they have three times now put on the ballot by signature gathering, paid with using paid signet, uh, gatherers, a measure which would permit local government to have entered into rent control uh, or rent stabilization with almost no limits. <clears throat> right now, the state imposes limits uh, that are a compromise. You can raise your rent landlord so much, you can raise it more if you're a small scale land owner. You can raise it, there's no control if it's a more modern building, there's no control over the, if uh, it's a balance. I don't like it, it needs to be improved. It's too much, too tenant oriented, too, not enough tenant oriented and too much landlord oriented, the present law. But I'm not in favor of throwing out the compromises and putting it into a anything goes. And here's the reason. If local government can impose any kind of rent control it wants, then those many local governments in California that want to block the arrival of rental property, especially affordable rental property, have a wonderful new tool to stop development to create an uncertainty that will make it impossible for a developer, either rental housing at the bottom end or rental housing at the market end, the uncertainty will keep, in my opinion, developers away. And in some cases will forbid them to do projects that would have penciled out, but they have been um, used, the, the local government NIMBYs have used this new tool to keep from uh, getting uh, passes. So I'm in a horrible position. I believe in tenant rights. I believe in rent control limits that are fair as, as fair as possible and balanced uh, so that uh, landlords uh, can survive and make a reasonable profit. Tenants have as much protection as is possible. Um, Unfair evictions are controlled. That's what I want to see in this field. This limits the government's ability to control what could become a wild circus. That's why, uh, yes, in my backyard, action, an organization, and, uh, and the uh, Abundant Housing Los Angeles, and uh, a number of groups which I work, even though they are for tenant rights, are against Proposition uh, 33. Um, I have other friends, including some of the tenant uh, organizers in Claremont, who say, well, that, that's a theoretical danger. It's, it's, it's a real danger, but it's theoretical. But what's for clear right now is my rent's too damn high and I wanna get it down and maybe this is a way to do it. And we support this legislation. So uh, both choices in my opinion, yes, no, or silent are all bad. The organization I lead, um, Housing Claremont, our position is we can't take a position on this. Uh, so uh, that's, that's our position. Uh, now 34, 34 was put on the ballot by the Apartment Owners Association as revenge. It will 
create a, a special um, obligation that any organization, and there's only one, any organization that uh, has income from prescription uh, of pharmacy sales must use 95% of it for direct services to the people who are receiving the prescriptions. You can't use it for putting ballot measures on the ballot. It's revenge legislation, pure and simple. It is, we don't like it that you put signatures on the ballot to pass your bill, we're gonna get you. But that's not the right way to use the ballot. Whether you like Weinstein or not, and I don't, going after him for revenge using the tool of the voters is an outrageous misuse of democracy. And therefore, I am opposed to Proposition 34. Are there any questions? Yes. Why are the Apartment Association for it? Is that the Weinstein organization? Uh, the, the, uh, no, the, the proposition, they are opposed to Proposition 33. They are in favor of Proposition 34. They wrote it. They, they got the signatures to pass it. They put 34 on the ballot. And the reason they put it on 34 on the ballot was to punish uh, Michael Weinstein and the AIDS uh, organization. So, um, my position on 33 puts me very, very uncomfortably with the Apartment Owners Association, mm. although I'm far from a landlord. Question, yes, sir. I, I certainly didn't realize how complex Proposition 33 was. I didn't realize how complex Proposition 33 was. Yeah, um, it, uh, it has, uh, a obvious in intention of permitting local government to pass their own versions of rent control. That sounds like a good thing, but it has unintended or maybe intended consequences of making it less likely that any community will get new rental apartments built, uh, either market rate or subsidized. Uh, I just want to I think it would be important for the voters to understand that there's already state law that allows affordable housing developers to um, avoid some of the tactics that the NIMBYs use to prevent development of affordable housing in their cities. Um, and so your theoretical consideration about maybe new housing couldn't come in, um, so that might be true for the, for the market rate apartments. But uh, I think that the affordable ones, um, they would still be able to get in under the, the provision of state law. And I think that's really important to understand because all Costa Hawkins does is limits the ability of local governments to, to create rent controls, to stabilize rents or to create rent controls. They say you can't uh, control rents on single family, family housing, and you can't control rents on apartments that are built, built after 1996. So this is more than 30 years ago now. Uh, it, it, uh, the, the cities can. So you would recommend that people vote yes on Prop, 30, on Prop 33? Absolutely. As would many other tenant advocates. I spent more than 10 years of my life in the housing district movement. Not quite as much as you, yep. Reverend G. But. Yep. And uh, uh, I have many, many friends with the same position. I wish this wasn't happening. Okay. Um, Moving along, one more uh, issue on the county ballot, the LA County ballot, and that is uh, G. Uh, G is uh, put, was put on by three of the five county supervisors. Um, it uh, would revise the county's charter in many ways. One is it would expand the board of supervisors from five to nine. Right now, the supervisors each have more constituents than most United States senators. Um, it would, and that's a fact, just a straight out fact that, that you know, with 10 million people divide by five, you've got around 2 million people. Um, and 2 million is more than the population of a whole bunch of states. So you have a, a situation where um, the, the five women uh, who are on the board of supervisors have huge, huge constituencies. Uh, changing that to nine um, 
which would also perhaps improve uh, the geographic dispersal of, of racial inclusion uh, in districting. Um, creating an elected executive, in effect, a county mayor elected by the people instead of an administrator who works for the five supervisors who right now are the legislative and the executive and the judicial branch of county government. The supervisors are basically all three. This would create much more robust executive function separate from the legislative function. Three of the supervisors support this. One liberal and uh, Catherine Barger uh, oppose it. Uh, and uh, Catherine is a, a re remarkable unicorn. She's a moderate Republican um, with uh, very good support normally for uh, health and welfare services. So the five supervisors put it on the ballot uh, with two of them opposing it. Any questions about five? Oh, five is supported by LA Times. And it's supported by most parts of the county workforce. They are divided. The labor force is divided on this issue. Some of the, uh, some of the law enforcement um, groups are opposed. Most of the SEIU and, uh, um, and office staff uh, uh, um, unions are in support. Um, what are the arguments against? The argument against it, um, the argument against it is it, it, it costs money to make changes, first of all. Secondly, um, that um, if you have a, a county uh, executive that's political and that somehow these are not political currently, um, which is not a good argument. Um, and a, um, an additional argument in favor that I didn't list yet is that part of the charter change would mean that there would be public hearings on the department level budgets before the budget gets assembled into one great big county budget and voted on by the supervisors. Right now, the public input comes too late in the game. This would require by charter that the public input comes earlier in the budget development for the county. That's a very good thing. Although it might slow the, it might make it harder to get a budget, but it would have greater public support and input. Um, I glance at jurisdictions in our wider parish. I've got a paragraph in here uh, that just has a little bit of reference uh, to uh, a, a sales tax in, uh, increase in Upland. Um, a uh, giveaway of a very important hospital uh, to a bad uh, provider of, of uh, for-profit services in Palm Springs and a couple of other local measures uh, that I'm making brief reference to in here. I don't have time to chat about it. Um, the um, <coughs> political parties uh, the, the way things work in California, there's most there's a lot of safe districts. Um, we are fortunate in our area that most of the people who are in, um, Democrats, uh, Democrats can safely vote for. People who are moderate Republicans have a hard time finding candidates to support. Uh, third parties uh, are uh, very weak at the moment and uh, very tempting to use them. I always issue a warning. There's a party called the American Independent Party. Uh, it is a legacy of the George Wallace administration, the segregate, segregationist uh, governor of uh, Alabama, was it, uh, decades ago. It is, and what happens is, and this has been well proven in research, lots of voters think they have become an independent by signing up as a member of the independent party uh, when they register to vote. It, it is a right-wing political party. You don't wanna to belong to it if your goal is to be a not, for not, the, not stated independent voter, okay? Um, it is not too late to register. Uh, it is safe 
it is safe despite all of the national fury from uh, opponents of open voting. It is safe to mail your ballot in California. Your ballot comes by mail. You uh, fill, fill it out. You sign and seal and date the outside envelope. You put it in the mail. If you're uncomfortable putting it in the mail, take it to a vote center. Um, and the vote center hours are in here. The final locations have not been announced. Um, if you can also put it in a drop box. There, for instance, the drop boxes near me include the county library. Um, it is safe, let me repeat, I keep having to say this to residents of Pilgrim Place. It's safe to mail your ballot, even though there is a politician telling you it isn't safe, it is safe. Um, the last couple of pages here are my partisan take on uh, district judges, which is a nonpartisan office uh, after a lot of research and a recommendation that if you're in LA County, you vote yes for George Gascon. Um, he is, um, it doesn't matter if you like his personality or not, I don't. Um, he represents a liberalization uh, of uh, over-incarceration. Uh, he represents uh, a, a advocate for treatment programs and for um, smart, modern uh, prosecution instead of just trying to throw the book and fill the jails. And for that, he has been subject to repeated recall attempts and uh, his opponent uh, comes in my opinion, too far uh, from the right, which is why the LA Times uh, and many others are endorsing Gus Gohm. You don't have to like his style to think that he's the better choice. Okay, I've got uh, about two minutes left. Um, I hope you'll read the rest of the, the, the political part of this about school board and local city council in, in Claremont. Uh, which was not our topic today, but I thought that the handout that I've got for Pilgrim Place would be of interest to you. A final reminder that Jake said, uh, that Jacob said, and that I said at the beginning, I was not presenting the views of Claremont United Church of Christ. I was not telling people who are constituents of this church how to vote. I was telling you how I was voting in an educational program that the church is sponsoring for the purposes of having well-informed citizens who will make up their own mind. That is our tradition. Don't anyone, anyone uh, give in to the frequently repeated uh, attempt to smear by saying this church has told people that they have to vote for liberals. I did not say that. Okay, let's go to church. Thank you for sharing. Feel free to distribute this to anyone else you want to. Uh, and if you are interested in the Claremont First District, the First District race in Claremont, you're welcome to come on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. to Pilgrim Place. Thank you very much.